Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Jeremy Martel. I'm the uh, Community Engagement Manager for the Cape Breton Partnership. And on behalf of uh, the Cape Breton Partnership and our partners with the province of Nova Scotia, um, but thank you very much for attending and for uh, coming today. Um, before we get started on our presentation, um, now on our presentations, uh, I, I'd like to give a quick technical brief to everyone so you have an idea of what we're doing today and, and how you can participate and ask questions and all that. So we're using the Zoom platform for this, uh, specifically the webinar platform for Zoom. And what that means is that you as attendees, we can't see you or hear you. So don't worry if you have to get up for a coffee break. Um, don't worry if you have to stretch. We can't see you. We can't hear you. If you have to yawn or cough or sneeze, don't worry about it. We're all fine here. Uh, if you have any questions, you'll see that there's a Q&A button on your screen um, along the black bar. Um, feel free to um, ask your questions there whenever you have them. We'll be holding questions until the end of the presentations um, and asking and answering them as a group. So uh, if you submit them there, we'll see them and we'll get to you in turn. Um, if you have any technical issues or comments, please let us know in the chat box that'll go directly to us and we'll take a look and we'll try to help you out. Um, if you have a question and you don't want to submit it via text but you want to ask it out loud, uh, just send me a message in the chat or put your hand up. Um, there's a button actually on your screen uh, uh, that'll say raise your hand and I'll see that and I'll know to um, hand you the mic when it's time for questions. Um, so uh, with that being said, uh, um, as many of you are aware, um, there have been a number of major public infrastructure projects uh, announced for Cape Breton that has represented a, an a, a unprecedented, unprecedented investment in excess of a uh, billion dollars. And we're very proud to be partnering with uh, the province of Nova Scotia to bring you today's virtual session that's going to include a number of topics uh, around the opportunities for businesses stemming from these projects. Um, as I mentioned before, if you have any questions throughout the presentations, please don't uh, be shy, ask your questions and we'll make sure that they're entered into the queue. Um, and with that, I'd like to introduce Roy McDonald, uh, Manager of Project Management Services with Nova Scotia Lands. And uh, Roy is going to start off our presentation. So Roy, I'm inviting you up to the virtual podium. We can't quite hear you, Roy. I have to unmute. I have to unmute myself, do I, Jeremy? Yes, sir. There you are. We have you now. So I am. Uh, so anyway, welcome, welcome everybody. This is a, a very exciting time. And I'd also want to say that we're, uh, as presenters, we're a little bit nervous today because, uh, even more so than in person, because when you're doing this electronically, um, so many things can go wrong. So hopefully. Hopefully we've 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 practiced and hopefully we've got it down. So I'm going to begin by sharing my screen. And um, Jeremy, you tell me if uh, so. I'm, I I have it in. Uh, I'm not sure which screen that I'm sharing here. We so, see it in edit view, Roy. So if you click present, we should see your presentation. Do, do, do. I don't see present. Um, uh, yeah, from beginning in, in the top oh, left. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay, sure. So can you, so how's that? We're good, perfect. See that? Okay, so um, as you, uh, most of you uh, are small business, uh, small business folks, um, you, uh, you know you make the world go round here. Um, not only here, but around the world. Uh, uh, so what I want you to do as we go through this project, it's a huge project, hundreds of millions of dollars over the next many years. Uh, I, want, I want you to think about how you can become involved and, and really how you can basically extract uh, any, any amount of money from this project to, uh, for, your, for, your own, uh, for your own businesses and so on. So uh, this is a huge, huge investment. Um, and there are lots of opportunities, and we're going to get into the details of those uh, of those uh, coming soon. Uh, I've got a very short presentation here, um, just mostly 
mostly pictures of different elements of the project. And then I've got a timeline, a Gantt chart schedule that I'm going to go through and hopefully paint a picture for you of what's going to happen over the next uh, over the next several years here. Uh, we've been working on this project for about uh, probably about a year now in planning and and uh, planning and designing and so on. And, and we've actually started construction. And I also want to mention that uh, many of you are aware of the downtown development, uh, the, the Nova Scotia Community College. We're not we're not talking about that here today. It's only the healthcare redevelopment project. So, um, so keep in mind that besides what we're we're talking about here, um, the community, uh, the Nova Scotia Community College is also ongoing at the same time. So, so just starting. So the healthcare redevelopment project uh, has four major components. Um, the north side uh, north side general hospital will be uh, will be phased out and we'll build a new health center a long term care facility and a uh, and a laundry facility on the north side in the north side industrial park um, in New waterford we're building a new health center uh, a new long term care facility and a and we're going to rebuild back so and that's all uh, in a in a wonderful opportunity for uh, for that community and we're calling it the new waterford hub so we're integrating all of those components into a single into a single facility it'll be the only one in in north america that has uh, uh that uses that approach uh at glace bay we'll be doing a, a new emergency department and a significant renovation inside the existing hospital and the largest of all the projects is the cape Breton regional project uh, a new emergency department critical care uh, a brand new cancer care standalone facility. So that's uh, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, and I'm just and I just have some uh, some conceptual renderings from our design uh, our architects and designers. Uh, this would be the Cape Breton Regional Regional Project. Project. Uh, you hear what you see here is the clinical services building. Um, it's the higher the higher building. Behind it, that's kind of grayed out, is the existing facility, and in the foreground is the new cancer center. And when it's all built, it'll be connected, uh, all connected through pedways. Um, so that's the, that's the regional. We'll get into more detail on that. Um, the north side facility, and there's you know there's perhaps uh, some questions about what's actually going to be built on the north side, and a lot of concern about closing facilities and so on. But in in effect. Or in fact, uh, we're building a significant facility over there. This is a, a, a rendering of that. Uh, off to the left, you can see a, uh, a the the a shorter a shorter building, short flat building that's uh, I guess somewhat uh, somewhat below grade. That would be the new laundry facility, and the larger building is the new health center and the uh, long term care facility. And uh, once you get up to about the second floor, you'll have we'll, have beautiful views of uh, of the harbor. This is in the Northside Industrial Park, actually right behind, uh, not too far from the existing Northside General. Um, this is a conceptual drawing where uh, we don't have any uh, architectural renderings to share, except uh, except this 3D uh, type image here, um, and it it just gives you uh, uh, some idea of the magnitude of of the project in New Waterford as well. So this facility. Uh, is in fact uh, a new rebuilt uh, Breton Education Center, a long-term care facility, and a health center, all combined into one on the site, uh, basically of the existing uh, Breton Education Center, and it's integrated so there are common spaces and, and so on. Um, and we're in the early stages of design on the Glace Bay on the Glace Bay project. So if you can see, I'm not sure if you can see my cursor here, but on this end of the building will be adding a new emergency center and a significant renovation inside the facility. So that's, uh, if you can kind of keep that in mind, I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail on the schedule timeline of each of, of, each of these. And uh, I'm gonna share, not that one, yeah. Okay, so I don't know, Jeremy, I don't think you can see the screen, right? So. Not yet, Roy. So, so if you close that presentation, um, it, down at the bottom of the screen, there are three dots that there should be a, 
uh, a option to to end that yeah end show there you are and uh and then if you here i'll stop your screen from the side if you go to share your screen again just share that new piece of info you want to add in perfect we see it see it perfect so what i've what i've done here is i'm, I'm going to talk briefly about each of the components once again here in in a timeline or a gantt chart a gantt chart here so what i what i have is the entire project here this shows the timeline this green vertical line would be today anything to the left of that is is design work and planning that has already happened and in fact we've we've begun construction so i'll slide that over to that green bar so this is today this will be the timeline across the top in years. Uh, this shows it going out into 2028. Uh, those, uh, those, those end dates are, uh, um, I guess there's, I wouldn't get too hung up on the end dates at this point. We're still working through uh, design. We have a, a fairly significant renovation inside the regional, regional hospital after the new facilities are built. But nevertheless, most of the work is happening in the first five years here. Um, so I'm, I'm going to collapse these and I'm going to talk about each one of these projects um, individually, uh, basically on the timeline that we're, that we're working on right now. So um, I'm going to start by opening up, so at the Cape Breton Regional Site, I'm going to start with the project we're working on now, which is the regional site work. So I'm going to slide this back here. So basically what the green bars represent is the design phase and the tendering phase and the construction di or the construction document phase followed by the tender phase and then the orange bar represents the construction phase as you can see the green vertical line here our design phase on the site works that's happening at the regional hospital is complete and we're actually out there now uh, a local contractor is doing a five and a half million dollar contract now on the site works here at the regional hospital so as you see this orange bar uh, that represents the construction work, that site work will be ongoing out into probably late November. Uh, we have another tender on the street right now, which is a large mechanical uh, a piping uh, tender that's on the street. Uh, and we'll be starting that this spring and it'll be moving out, uh, uh, moving out all through the, all through the summer. Um, so the site work then, uh, uh, turns into uh, some of our building and foundation. So the next thing you'll see out there is the energy center. So the energy center is essentially the plant that, uh, prov that houses all the equipment to, uh, to heat and cool the buildings. And the mechanical piping contract allows all that heating and cooling to get into the new facility. So the design, um, as you can see the green bar here, uh, we're here today. Uh, there's been a fair bit of design planning to date. Um, we're in the middle of uh, uh, compiling the tender documents uh, or the construction documents that'll follow be that will be followed by the tender documents. Um, and we hope this orange bar represents the construction of the energy energy center, and that'll be happening and happening the foundation work happening sometime uh, in this uh, this spring, late spring, and that will and that will go on and uh, our. Construction manager will talk a little bit more about the details of the construction, but um, that goes on to um, to late uh, 2022. So that's just the energy center. At the same time, here at the regional site, uh, as the energy center is happening and this earthwork happening, uh, we'll also begin the foundation for the new standalone cancer center. So we're once again we're in the construction document phase. The construction documents are putting together the specifications and the, and the uh, drawings for, uh, for contractors to actually bid on it. So we're in, the ten, we're in that stage of the cancer center. Um, that'll be tendered in the, in the spring. Um, the construction will start uh, sometime late spring. We'll be starting foundations. And then that work will go on until uh, probably late 2000 and 2023, represented by the orange construction bar. Um, then, 
the largest component of the regional project is the clinical services addition. That would be the higher building that you saw in the rendering. Um, we are once again continuing to design. We're into the design development phase of the of the clinical services building. The construction will start uh, probably mid to late next summer, not not this upcoming summer, but in 2022. And that construction goes all the way out into probably late 2000, 2026. It's a, a seven seven story building. I'm losing my voice here. It's a seven story building. Uh, or the intention at this point is that it will be a concrete uh, a concrete structure. Paul Landry from our construction management firm will be will be speaking to that in a little more detail. Um, Followed, following the clinical service building is um, once once it gets completed and uh, all the services move from the existing facility into the new facility, there'll be a significant re renovation inside the existing hospital to make use of the vacated space. That's a few years out. Uh, we haven't begun to design on that. The design on that probably starts in 2023. And the construction won't start until probably late 2025, 26, as represented by this orange bar here. So that's the Cape Breton regional site. Moving over to the north side, I'm going a little bit faster, and I know there's a bit of delay. So, so we've got three, basically three components on the north side. Starting, I'll start with the site work. Um, we actually have a tender. Uh, there's a tender at market right now. Uh, closes on February, I think it's the 18th or the 19th, and that would be for the site works over on the north side or early site works. So sometime, sometime, um, probably within the, within the next couple of months, there'll be a contractor on site uh, clearing it, uh, doing the grubbing, um, starting starting some excavations, and that just leads into all of all of the uh, all of the construction work, which is. Um, First of all, the laundry facility. So the laundry facility is in, uh, we're in the design development phase of the laundry facility, and that'll be the first component of the north side that actually gets started. And we have that showing here as getting started um, later on this uh, late, late spring, early summer uh, with concrete work at the, uh, at the laundry facility. And then that laundry facility, Laundry facility construction leads into the construction of the health center and the long-term care facility. They're all attached, but we'll we're pushing the laundry facility out in front of uh, out, out in front so we can get uh, so we can get working at on the site. So the lawn or the uh, long-term care facility will start uh, sometime probably late uh, late 2021. So late. In the, the fall, probably, uh, and that that goes up until probably mid 2024, in that range. So that would be the north side, the, the summary of the north side facility. New Waterford. Uh, I'm showing the sports field relocation here. This is this project, as you can see, the green vertical line here. This project is complete. So we had to move the sports fields out of the way in order to make room for a. Uh, for the new facility, the new hub facility that I showed in the in the rendering. Um, so I'll close close that up. Um, the first part of the project in uh, Glace or in New Waterford will, in fact, be the construction of a new school. So um, it's uh, currently in the design development stage. Uh, we hope to break ground and start early work sometime this summer uh, with a with a essentially another energy plant. Uh, and then the, the underground piping and so on in, in the preparation and uh, perhaps some concrete work uh, on the on the back on the new back school. And so what's happening on the on the new Waterford site is and I'll open up the health center. We've designed it, then we're going to construct it, the school that is. And then there's a period of time that the school, the kids have to move out of the existing back and they'll move into the new school. And then this purple line represents the demolition of the existing back. And then that will be followed by this orange bar, which is the construction of the health, uh, the health center and the long-term care facility. 
very exciting uh, news and action in New Waterford. Uh, the Glace Bay facility is um, currently in, uh, in schematic design. So we're on the final stages of the schematic design for the Glace Bay facility, a new emergency department uh, and a renovation inside the existing facility. We hope to get to some construction uh, in that uh, the, uh, next year because it's a fairly significant design phase, uh, very complicated design phase once you get into an interior renovation of an existing operating facility. So, so that's pretty much uh, the projects in a nutshell. Uh, our construction managers will follow my presentation and they'll go into each one of them in a little bit more detail and explain, um, basically explain how that whole construction process works, what their role is, and perhaps how you can become involved in, in the project as well. So with that, I'll end my presentation. So or maybe Jeremy, you can end it for me. I certainly can. And, and before we hear from our construction managers, I, I am going to uh, pass the podium over to um, Nick Godine of uh, Nova Scotia Lands as well. Uh, so, Nick, you should have a notice on your screen to come up and join the podium. Perfect. Thank you. Sorry, I'm a little dark. I have the benefit of uh, south light in my office, but it makes it really hard to try to light up my face. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and uh, share my presentation with you shortly. There we go. And maybe, Jeremy, you can let me know when folks are seeing that. We have the presentation up now. It's perfect, Nick. Thank you. Great, thank you. So Roy set the stage uh, by giving you an overview of our project. Um, I'm gonna try to expand on that uh, by talking about some supplier opportunities. Um, so we'll get into the meat of the presentation now, but I'd like to talk about those supplier opportunities in the context of the project life cycle. So we'll start with the design phase. Uh, the design phase, uh, the, our design teams are EXP and Architecture 49, depending on the project, and they're looking for opportunities to integrate locally produced and available materials into the design of the building. The work, that work is happening, happening informally now, and we need your help to create a comprehensive list of suppliers uh, in the region to ensure that we don't miss anything. Uh, my colleagues will be talking a little bit more about that as we move forward. Um, uh, and uh, the last slide will refer you to a procurement link uh, where you can tell us about your business uh, so that we can make sure that we know about it. Um, during the tender phase, uh, I can tell you that we've been working to break down the uh, trade packages. And again, our construction managers are going to explain a little bit more about that shortly into their smallest feasible packages in order to ensure that um, they're small enough for local contractors to bid. That being said, it is a big project and some of these packages might be too big uh, for you to bid. But we want you to keep in mind that everything that we, uh, all of these trade packages will be going out via the public tenders website. And we encourage you to partner with or to discuss with some of the larger firms that you believe would be bidding on these projects uh, to uh, offer your services to them. So um, then we move on to the build phase. Uh, so. Uh, I think I saw a question there about um, the cost of the project. So I'm not gonna give a solid answer on that other than to say that it's hundreds of millions of dollars um, and all of the work in Cape Breton is valued in excess over $1 billion. That would be all of the provincial projects um, over a five to 10 year period. So what I guess I'm trying to get at is it takes a lot of workers, a lot of equipment and a lot of specialists to make these projects happen. So we want to keep in mind that there's going to be a lot of workers on site at any given time, and that creates opportunities to provide services for those workers. That could be food services, lodging, or other opportunities, some of which the construction managers will be talking about shortly. Finally, we come to post-construction. So the work that we're doing is going to expand the healthcare system. That requires additional skilled workers, such as nurses, doctors, physicians, therapists, industrial engineers, it also involves people like hairdressers uh, who can cut hair at long-term care. There's an opportunity for a business or folks that can provide uh, food uh, for the kitchens at all four of these facilities. I don't, I have a couple of examples, but I think are uh, of um, 
of uh, opportunities that we've seen at other sites, but I think our construction managers are going to get into that in a little more detail. So I'll try to keep my presentation short and uh, I'll just throw this slide up for you to review for a little bit. It provides some general resources. As I said before, uh, we use the procurement, uh, public procurement uh, to hire all of our contracts and the procurement website is www.procurement.novascotia.ca. Uh, there's a supplier inventory that we'd love you to check out at that website. Uh, and other than that, I'm just gonna say thank you and keep my presentation brief so that you can hear a lot more from my colleagues. Thank you very much, Nick. And with that, I would like to uh, introduce Robbie Frame, uh, project manager with uh, PCL. And Robbie, you should have an invitation on your screen to join us as well. Okay, thanks very much. I, I appreciate that, Jeremy. So um, you'll hear from both myself as well as Paul Landry from Lindsay Palmer Law. My name is Robbie Frame, and I'm with PCL Constructors. So we're going to be uh, construction manager for the north side and the waterford projects. Okay, and I'll describe those a little bit. But first, I wanted just to describe our role as construction manager, which will apply both to myself and to and to Paul. Okay, so we're going to be working with uh, Nova Scotia Lands, which is the owner in this case. That's Nick and Roy's group. You just heard from them, as well as A49, who's the architect. Okay, we'll also be working with trade contractors and suppliers, of course. Trade contractors will be contracted directly to the province, okay, and managed by us as the owner agent. That's that's essentially our role, and all the tendering for the trade contractor bidders will be phased. Okay, um, we'll also engage with suppliers directly for indirect cost items uh, associated with the projects. Um, in other words, general expense items that don't form part of the construction itself. For example, temporary signage, trailers, surveying, fencing, scaffolding, etc. And I think I'll I'll just share my my screen here. Uh, to show you some of those items and, and go through them in a little bit more, more detail. Okay, so here are some of those items and I won't read off all of them, but you know, it could be temporary water and coffee uh, to, serve the, to serve the sites, uh, courier, office supplies and furniture, um, accommodations, flights, surveying, temporary toilets, security, uh, temporary fencing, trash removal, final cleaning, stone removal, scaffolding, and a number of other items as well, most of which are on this list. I'll just leave it up for, for a moment, okay? People can uh, read that and, and go through it in a little bit more detail, see things that may apply to them. So I'll, I'll go on to just talk a little bit about some of the workforce development opportunities for underrepresented groups. So um, the contracts will uh, state that 10% of all workforce hours must be performed by individuals from underrepresented groups. Okay, And in the case where a trade contractor is unionized, um, and they will have to use a minimum of 25% of the labor force as apprentices, and then 10% of those apprentices would come from an underrepresented group, okay? So now I'll just kind of, I'll follow some of what Roy said. He did a really good job of describing the project. So I'll, I'll kind of show you uh, some specifics. There's a little bit of duplicated information here, but um, hopefully you'll be able to associate it with the, with the side of the project that we're running. And, and, and I think it will give you a little bit more information as well. So for, North side, um, as Roy mentioned, here's a, here's a site plan uh, for that. It's between North Sydney and Sydney Mines. Uh, I think that the magnet plant is, is just adjacent to the site. So it consists of a new laundry and uh, CUP building, CUP being the central utility plant or uh, you know energy as, as Roy put it, okay? And then we have the new long-term care and health center, which is, which is here and of course a parking space. Uh, for, for both public and staff. Okay, so that's that's north side. And then I have a couple of uh, renderings as well. Um, you can see, I guess, the S Sydney River here, and here's the here's the laundry facility, and there's the long-term care and the health center, which is just magnified in this in this slide here. And, and there's more of a color rendering, uh, which shows what that building will look like. Okay.
and that's New Waterford. Okay, so on this one, this faint line here, which I'm outlining, that's the existing Breton Education Center. Okay, so that will remain in place while we build the new Breton Education Center, which is just this space here. Okay, and then that existing school comes down and then the health center and long-term care is built in its place. Okay, and I guess associated uh, with both, but something that goes up with the school itself is that CUP or energy, the central utility plan, okay. So with Northside, um, it's a 60 bed long-term care um, and it's the same that new water for the new Breton Education Center will be uh, grade six to 12, okay. The projects will be separately tendered and the number of tender packages for the projects will exceed 100. Okay. Um, some packages will be individual, in other words, for a single bidder, and that would be the case for the first package, which is out for Northside, which is uh, the early site works, the site clearing package. So that just means the package is going to be bid on by uh, one trade division only, being site work. Okay. Some of the later packages um, are going to be bid by say multiple drywallers, but also multiple painters and uh, flooring trades, all with this, in the same set of documents, okay? So all of that will be phased and be coming out sequentially as the design is developed. Um, the approximate size of the projects uh, in terms of meter square um, would be uh, 25,000 for north side and 22,000 for new water for, for a total of just under 50,000. 50, and the combined budget for, for these projects uh, looks to be in the order of about $300 million, okay? So as Roy mentioned, the first package is out for tender now, that's for Northside uh, Early Site Works. Um, we'd expect to have a first, a first package out for New Waterford in the spring and uh, the projects themselves, they'll be built over the next several years. So I thank you for uh, listening to me and, and, and hopefully we were, I was able to convey uh, some things about the project that, that will be of uh, interest to you. Thank you. Thank you, Robbie. And with that, I'd like to hand it over to Paul Landry with Palmer Low Lindsay. Hello, everyone. Uh, Robbie, I guess you can confirm for me whether or not uh, you can uh, see my face at this point in time and, and hear me correctly. We certainly can. I can. Yes, Paul. Okay, that's great. Uh, so thanks to everyone for taking the time to join us here today. Um, my name is, uh, I'll actually just start sharing my screen now, Robbie, if that's all right. So is that uh, sharing well for, for everyone, Jeremy, that you can tell? It's not up on the screen yet. Uh, we'll just get you to press the, I think it's a blue share button that should be there below once you click on the screen. And now we see it. Excellent. So yes, uh, thanks everyone. I'll be speaking about the Cape Breton Regional Hospital project specifically. Um, so my name is Paul Landry. Uh, I'll be the Senior Construction Manager with Palmer Low Lindsay. Uh, Palmer Low Lindsay is just that. We're a joint venture company uh, between Palmer Low Construction and Lindsay Construction. Um, and we'll be acting as the Construction Manager. Uh, Robbie did a great job describing what that role entails. Um, but basically, as he said, uh, we will work with the client, Nova Scotia Lands, uh, the users, uh, Nova Scotia Health, uh, consultant in this case is EXP, uh, Robbie has A49, and we'll be working with the various contractors and suppliers to, to facilitate all the uh, various contracts. Moving forward, um, overall, this project uh, consists of what I would call five major projects. Um, in total, uh, approximate value of $400 million uh, over approximately nine years. So I'll run through each of these, uh, do a little high level run through through each of these projects. The first one is the Early Work Site Works package. Um, you can see in the diagram here on the right is basically uh, an overhead plan view of the project in its entirely. So just to the far right is the uh, end, the, the backside, I guess I would say, of the existing building. So um, all the packages included together, the first one would be the early site work package, which is basically taking this whole area on this sketch 
and getting the groundwork, the earthwork basically to a, to a level, level playing field and ensuring that all services like water mains and duct banks and sanitary and storm lines are, are installed. So everything from underground is installed for mechanical electrical. So that's the uh, first site work package. It's actually uh, was awarded in early January to a local company, uh, Northern Contracting Limited. They've been on site for roughly four or five weeks. Anybody driving by can see lots of activity. Uh, there's a package closing on the 18th of February for all the district heating piping that will run from the new energy center here uh, to the left. And that will that piping will run to the new Cape Breton Cancer Center, the clinical services addition and into the existing building. Um, and the final tender package for this project will consist of what we refer to as flat works, which would be basically um, items such as curbs, sidewalks, asphalt, line painting, um, landscaping, and any site furnishings such as electric car chargers, um, bicycle racks, and whatnot. Um, and also one item that will be critical to the project that will be completed in this early works phase is the new helipad, which is here uh, shown as an extension of the existing Martha Boulevard. Um, basically the work as uh, Roy said, will uh, go until basically late, uh, late fall, early winter, basically November, December of 2021. Um, just uh, as a, before I get into the next packages, so this is the early work package. The next uh, three I'll be talking about are the energy center, the Cancer Center and the Clinical Services Edition, which can all be seen here on this plan. So moving to the Energy Center, uh, very pleased to say that basically everything I'm gonna say is in line uh, with what Roy had previously spoken about. So uh, the Energy Center is just that, it's a, it's a large building that will house most of the mechanical electrical equipment that will uh, tie into the system as a whole uh, to provide um, all mechanical electrical requirements to the new buildings, as well as help facilitate those systems in the existing building. Um, tendering will take place basically between February uh, 2021 and August 2021. Construction will take place roughly between April 2021 and September 2022. The tendering will consist of approximately 31 trade packages. So those would be from, you know, an example, I won't get into the complete list, but from excavating for foundations, formwork, rebar, concrete, masonry, steel, all building envelope items, all interior finish items, and the mechanical electrical systems as a whole. Um, right now we anticipate an approximate workforce, you know, it will uh, come and go, the numbers will, will will be fluid, they'll be changing on a daily basis, but roughly approximately a workforce on average of about 50 people. The next project to speak of will be the new Cancer Center. Cancer Center is uh, gonna be a two-story building, a uh, conventional um, steel structure with various envelope components of masonry, precast, brick veneer, uh, aluminum and glazing, siding. Um, <clears throat> inside uh, will be your typical finishes, drywall and the various specialty items. Uh, basically, this will be tendered from April of 2021 to December of 2021. Construction, as Roy, Roy stated earlier, basically May 2021 to July 2023. We anticipate uh, 36 trade contract vector packages with this building. Again, everything up uh, from foundation structure, building envelope, interior finishes, and uh, all mechanical electrical, and um, anticipated workforce of approximately 100 people. The next project will be the clinical services building. Um, on the rendering to the right, you can see the cancer center. Roy kind of shared the same rendering. Um, and then the new eight-story CSB building, which will include apartment departments such as new emergency department, critical care unit, uh, inpatient units, ORs, uh, mother and child facilities. Um, 
and the associated mechanical electrical services for that building. As Roy stated, uh, once all the buildings are completed, there will be pedways. Um, there's one illustrated here, which shows the connection between the new cancer center and the existing building. You don't quite see it very well, but on the back side of the new CSB building will be two pedways that enter the existing building. Um, so for this CSB building, we anticipate tendering from September 2022 to May 2023, roughly 38 tender packages. Uh, this project, instead of structural steel um, for a, a framework, will have structural concrete. Again, various components for building envelope and various components for interior finishes, as well as all the mechanical electrical services. Construction right now, um, it's a little bit of a moving target, but we are anticipating somewhere around November 2022 to July 2026. And uh, we can see a peak workforce of perhaps a couple of 100 to 250 people. Finally, um, again, uh, not even really in a conceptual stage, but the Cape Breton, once the owners take use of all the new facilities, um, we will go inside and renovate portions of the existing facility. Uh, so that would be uh, demolition and removal of existing services and finishes and uh, the reinstatement of new ones. Um, again, very early on, but uh, we would think about 23 tender packages between September 25th and December 25th or 2025. Uh, construction roughly December 2026 to June 2029 and uh, workforce of approximately 35 to 50 people. Um, further to everything uh, that we discussed, those are all separate trade contracts and total will exceed 140 trade contracts. Um, this is a list much like uh, Robbie shared um, of items that won't be tendered per se through the government um, website, but that are indirect cost items uh, with associated with completing the work. So that includes site trailers, um, housekeeping, cleaning companies, uh, water supplies, catering, security signage, construction and safety supplies, equipment rentals, temporary fencing, uh, scaffolding, uh, apparel, PPE. So uh, we and this list uh, goes on, I guess, uh, could include things like, you know, vehicles and services and inspection and testing agencies and, um, and, and smaller contracts to do uh, items like snow removal. Um, further to that, I guess just to try to help illustrate um, what the site will look like uh, kind of in peak construction, we have a, um, a small video, it's only about a minute long, that I'll share with the screen right now. I will uh, perhaps try to, to talk through most of it, but um, I will hit play and I will let it load and we'll go from there. So this is effectively uh, the overall site to the right there would be the Structural Steel Cancer Center. Um, moving to the back of the site, uh, you see the new energy center, as well as the helipad in the background. When you see all these seat containers, when you see all these job offices, these are indirect costs and items that would help um, with local business, local opportunities. Same as that perimeter site fencing that you see going around the site. These are all opportunities for um, people in the local area, local business to supply to the site. Um, again, um, with all of these workers, there's meals, there's accommodations. So quite a lot of opportunity, which will uh, be a, kind of a, an offspring of all these projects. There in the background, you see the new eight story concrete structure, which will be the CSB building. Again, you see all the trailers, office complexes, other items like hoisting and lifting equipment that will need to be used uh, throughout the duration of the site. So uh, we just uh, put this video together to try to show what such large scale uh, there will be and um, how much work will be involved and how much uh, labor force will be required. Uh, you see the portable potties there, uh, washroom stations, uh, again, just uh, further opportunities for, for others uh, to participate in this project. So that concludes uh, my portion of the presentation. Rob B, or uh, sorry, Jeremy, I think you can take it over from there. Absolutely, thank you very much, Paul. Really appreciate that. 
Uh, next, I'm going to ask uh, Kimberly Murphy to join us. And Kim, you should see a, um, a link on, in front of you asking to share your video. And I'm also going to share your presentation here as well. Is that coming through for you? Yep, I see it. Excellent. You just let me know when to change. Great. Thank you, Jeremy. And good morning, everyone. And thank you for joining us to learn more about these exciting projects that are coming to your area and what it could mean to you for your businesses. Um, I'm here today because procurement plays a very important role in all of these projects. Um, and we are a branch of Service Nova Scotia and Internal Services. And our role is to work very closely with our clients like Transportation and Infrastructure Renewal and Nova Scotia Lands to provide procurement knowledge and expertise as um, they seek unique and creative, uh, sustainable solutions for complex projects like the ones that you've uh, seen today. We oversee the Nova Scotia Sustainable Procurement Policy and manage the high value procurement process for government departments, Nova Scotia Health Authority and the IWK. Uh, and one of the reasons that we're involved with this session today is because we provide outreach and education to you, our supplier community, encouraging you to become part of the procurement public, public procurement equation. Um, and we also deliver sustainable procurement education to our internal clients, as well as those in the MASH sector and beyond. So we're happy to be working with the project teams on connecting you to the many opportunities that um, we learned about. And we're offering some learning sessions for you to become further aware of the public procurement processes and how they work and how you can become engaged uh, with these projects through that mechanism. You can go to the next slide, Jeremy. So the first session that we're offering is uh, next Wednesday at a similar time to today. And it's basically an introduction to selling to government. Um, for any of you that are looking to expand your clientele to the public sector, uh, you may have not uh, considered government an opportunity before for your business, but um, what we'll be sharing with you will be a comprehensive overview of public sector marketplace in Nova Scotia. And we're hoping that once you're uh, through that session, you will learn where to find the opportunities. So a lot of the discussion today was around tenders and trade packages, and that information will be posted on our website. So it's important to understand how that works, the importance of a REBA discovery, our e-bidding system, the tender opportunity, opportunity notification service, which delivers emails to you based on the um, characteristics that your business offers. So the goods and services that you offer, we can tailor notices right to you. <clears throat> we will go through the, the tender procedures and processes, as well as the importance of building networks to promote your business and uh, understanding the debrief process. So, so this package or this session is really meant for people that, um, for anybody that's interested in supplying goods or services to the government. And if you've been through one of these before, I would suggest that perhaps you, you take the time to join us again, because there may have been some things that have changed or new processes that weren't in place the last time you went through the session. So that's the first one. You can go to the next slide, Jeremy. The next one that we're hosting will be the following uh, Wednesday, February 24th. And this one is uh, focusing completely on our e-bidding system, which is Ariba. And um, this is where you will see the details for the large tenders for the uh, construction projects, as well as the trade packages that were discussed. And uh, you will have to be registered in Ariba. You'll have to understand how to prepare documents and submit them through the uh, electronic system how to navigate in the system, how to access help, how to um, submit questions to the procurement specialist and all of those things. And these are really, this system is a really important way for you to understand what is happening with the project. So if you aren't necessarily able to bid on a large project as some of the um, uh, presenters here today mentioned, it's important to know what is going on so that um, if your business could possibly be able to supply some of those outside of the tender package or tender uh, documents, you'll be able to know what's coming up. 
So it's important for you to get into the system, understand it, and know what opportunities are coming up. So that will be uh, on February 24th, and Jeremy through the Cape Breton Partnership will be sending out links and uh, opportunities to register for those sessions. Um, and in general, though, our team, uh, myself and Beth Hartling, do provide supplier support for anybody in uh, Nova Scotia that has questions about public procurement and how we uh, do our business and what requirements are um, necessary for you to participate. So if at any time you have questions, you can always reach out to us. And on the next screen, Jeremy, is some... Um, our contact information and we're here all the time to be able to answer any of your questions. So that's it for my presentation. Thank you very much Kimberly. I'll, I'll leave that up just for a uh, second in case anyone would like to copy down that information. Um, we are going to start getting into our Q&A portion of, uh, of this presentation now. Um, so if you have any questions, please continue to add them to the Q&A. I see we already have a few. Um, while we're getting ready to do that, I am going to put up a poll on everyone's screens. Um, just asking you how you found today's presentation. Um, it should only take you maybe five or six seconds to complete. Uh, it'll really help us in uh, framing the next few as well. Um, uh, so uh, please, please take part and we'll hopefully be able to uh, improve as we go on all these presentations. Uh, I'll also be inviting um, our panelists up to the podium, all of them, for, uh, for these uh, Q&As and kind of answer them in a panelist format. Um, so as we go through them, if there's any particular question that one of our panelists specifically wants to answer, um, please feel free to uh, unmute yourself and, and do so. Um, perfect. And thank you very much, everyone, for, for answering the questions on that poll as well. Um, I'm just going to get uh, Robbie to join us as well. Oh, there he is. Perfect. Um, so uh, we've got a few questions in, and, and uh, as uh, as we answer, please feel free to ask more if uh, if anything comes to mind. Um, so one question that we received here um, from Darlene is, what is the best way for a local business to reach out to offer their services? A, a part two of that question uh, is, how can businesses outside CBRM build a relationship with contractors in order to be considered? So I suppose that's more of a question for Paul and Robbie. <laughs> Hi, um, so it's Paul with uh, Palmer Low Lindsay. Um, the best way for local businesses to reach out to us would be to do just that. Uh, Robbie, I'm assuming through some sort of, uh, some format, our contact information will be available to these people. So um, I'm uh, sometimes tied up through the day, but uh, pretty good to get back to people as quick as possible when I can't answer. Um, absolutely feel free to share my contact info and uh, local businesses could reach out to me directly. Um, it would also be great if we can get a list of um, as many local businesses, suppliers, vendors as possible so that uh, we know to reach out to them in times as well when we're looking for things for a fencing or um, catering, uh, equipment rentals, uh, snow removal, any of those examples that Robbie and I shared. Um, and I think the other thing that would be critical is somehow for us to be able to communicate what tender packages are out there as well as posting who the successful contractors were because all of these uh, indirect costs as Robbie referred to uh, that we keep repeating, 90% of the trades are also gonna need these directly as well. So uh, the opportunities for the local businesses wouldn't just be with us ourselves as construction managers, but they'd be with each of the 140 or so uh, individual trade contractors that would be on just, you know, the Cape Breton Regional Hospital site itself. That's probably the best that I can do to answer that question. Robbie, you may want to um, add more, have some additional ideas as well. Well, uh, no, that's, that's great, Paul. Um, I know that uh, for everyone who is registered for this session, you've been put onto a list which has been sent to Paul and I. So that's that's a great first step. Um, of course, we're keeping a, a list of all 
prospective bidders, but also suppliers and the like. I think Paul's right also about, you know, uh, there will be some work that um, we'll be uh, responsible for procuring, okay, namely the indirect costs of things that are associated with the um, hard construction, like the permanent construction. So things like temporary fencing security, that list that I put up. Um, but there are also a lot of things that if you're not a trade contractor, there are a lot of things that trade contractors will need as well. And knowing uh, who's bidding what will be important. So monitoring the um, tender's website, Ariba, to see what packages are out. And you can see within that who is bidding, at least through the bidder briefing minutes, which is typically issued as, as well, as an addendum to the tender package. So it's just basically a document that makes a little change or update. And uh, so that would be a way to understand who's bidding at, at what time for what packages. Great, thank you both. Um, and, and I suppose to the part two, is there any specific advice for those uh, businesses outside CBRM or same advice either way? I think from my point of view, it's, 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 it's the same advice. I mean, um, I know Paul and I have both been uh, working in the Halifax Dartmouth market. So, I mean, for those of you in that category, we may know you already. Um, which is which is helpful, but 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 not necessary. I mean, we're we're interested in getting to know as many people as possible and spreading spreading this out as much as uh, it can be. Yes, and I would echo the same sentiment. Great, fantastic, thank you. Um, another question uh, from Gus: Would the landscaping work uh, include any outdoor furniture? And uh, a few examples being uh, benches, picnic tables, and so on. So yes, uh, the we we don't have the actual drawings yet or specifics in terms of uh, what will be included in these packages. So it's it's hard to get in specifics of items. But yes, typically um, landscape items uh, would include uh, outdoor furniture. If there's enough outdoor furniture uh, to justify having its own separate tender package, we would uh, we'd also look at that as well. But everything from benches, uh, electric car chargers. Uh, bicycle racks, um, any anything along those line items uh, would yes be uh, would be tendered as part of the flatworks package. One of the flatworks packages, uh, typically landscaping. Fantastic. And uh, this wasn't part of the question, but uh, I'm I think I know the answer, but we'll ask it anyway. Uh, where some of these uh, packages aren't out yet, and um, as you mentioned, some of the um, some of the projects aren't quite to uh, the concept level yet and things like that. It, it probably is important to engage sooner than later to offer services or to let them know that, let you know that they exist and so on, uh, and not to wait until stuff is necessarily out. Sooner you know the better, right? Absolutely. And uh, that information can be shared with us. Um, and, you know, Roy and his team and uh, between the various groups, we can make sure that also gets back to the consultants so that um, particular trade suppliers, manufacturers, and products can be can be included in the specifications. Perfect. Um, to that end, uh, when will, and this is a question from Gary, when will the Cape Breton Regional Hospital Flatworks tender be out? It's currently scheduled for approximately May, um, and that's as uh, recent as design and schedule and coordination meetings we had yesterday. So we expect uh, somewhere between late May, early June. Uh, I had one question came in via email, uh, so unfortunately I can't post it up, but I'll, I'll, uh, I'll paraphrase. Um, the question is for the um, services and suppliers that are not part of tendering processes and so on, um, how is it determined who to go with? Is it basically who, who you know, uh, who you're already familiar with and that kind of thing, or are there other uh, factors taken into account? I guess, in my opinion, it would be a combination of all of those. Um, I think, uh, I hope I'm not repeating myself and missing the actual question or the current question, but I believe in terms of being able to provide pricing and services to individual trade contractors, 
Um, the best thing to do would be get familiar with Ariba to see what trade packages are out there. Um, I believe Ariba, if not CANS, the Construction Association, may be able to tell people that look at that list who has uh, pulled plans, who plans on bidding on the project. So for example, if it was electrical and uh, I'm just using random names, um, you know, and you are an electrical supplier or vendor, or maybe you provided uh, data or communications, fire alarm work, for example, that would be part of an overall electrical package. Then I think between Ariba and the Construction Association, you would be able to see a list of bidders such as uh, Vico Coin, Link, Lanier, AB Mechanical, Black and McDonald, who are bidding on that project. And then you could reach out to them to see what services you could possibly provide them. Yeah, and just to follow up on that, um, that information would be supplied through CANS, not through the province. Excellent. Thanks for clarifying that. And to follow up on that further with some not so great news, but maybe this is a takeaway point. Um, as we move to electronic bidding, um, CANS doesn't keep a list of plans takers since they're all done electronically through the public hearings office. That is a change that was made uh, well, as a result of COVID, uh, and I guess it has this negative unintended consequence. So it's possible that we could work with public procurement uh, to, to do something differently there, if that's something that uh, people are looking for. Yeah, but again, just to reinforce, the most important thing from a supplier point of view is to get registered in Ariba to, to review it regularly. And I would suggest also to register for TONS, which we'll be explaining next week in our session, but that uh, service is free and it gives you the opportunity to learn about what is coming up. So even if a project doesn't seem like it would be related to you based on the title of the project or the, the main trade that would be going into it, as was mentioned, a lot of these indirect things will come from those tender package or trade packages and tenders. So it's important to know what's happening um, in order to be prepared to offer those services to the, the folks in the trades and to the awarded contractors. And we do post that award information on our website. So insofar as the question was about, um, I guess, contracting directly with PCL or Lindsay Pomelo outside of the tender process for indirect items, um, we typically look at, say, three prices and, and go with the lowest bid, a minimum of three prices, right? If there, if there are more uh, suppliers out there, we, we, we try to be in touch, uh, of course, with a bias to, to using local Cape Breton contractors or suppliers. And uh, I think you've said the magic word there, a uh, commitment to spending local where possible. So... The only way that you folks can spend local is if local providers are identifying themselves and getting involved. So today is the first step in many of you getting in touch. Right. And, and, and that list that you published, uh, Jeremy, you know, of attendees here, that's very helpful. You know, that's going to work its way into our master list or be cross-referenced against that just to, to make sure we're not missing uh, vendors. And uh, if anyone would like to take a look at that web tool uh, that, uh, that's been mentioned uh, through tons, I did post the link in the, uh, in the chat. So there's a link there that you can take advantage of and our follow-up sessions will actually be speaking more to, uh, to that process as well. Um, so uh, I, I'm going to start to wrap up a little bit. Um, and if anyone does have any further questions, please type them in. And if any come in, I'll uh, give a quick pause in order to, uh, to have them answered. Um, if you have, and also, if you have any questions following this, uh, I have our contacts up on the screen. Feel free to copy those down and reach out directly. Um, or to myself, I'll leave my email in the, uh, in the chat box if you have any questions about the uh, presentations that are coming up or registering or anything like that. Um, so so uh, I'd like to begin by saying thank you very much for everyone for attending. We had a uh, great turnout today and uh, we hope to continue that into our next sessions. Uh, lots of great questions asked and I'm sure there's still some more that are out there so feel free to send them through if you have them. Um, as uh, Kimberly had mentioned and, and uh, we alluded to, there, there are two more sessions coming up on February 17th, 
forth. Um, anyone who has been registered for this session and who attended the session uh, will also be receiving directly the information on how to join that call and what those uh, will be about. The format will be very similar to this, um, but obviously with some great info that you'll be able to take uh, advantage of directly. Uh, those will be um, obviously uh, selling to government and navigating the e-bidding system. Um, before we end, I, I'm not seeing any other questions. Do any of our panelists uh, have anything to add? And, and when I speak to our panelists, uh, I, I'm also referring to uh, Linda and Beth, who are, uh, have very kindly been in the background uh, taking it all in as well. I'm good for now myself. Thanks, uh, Jeffrey, for uh, hosting and moderating this. I, I did want to say I wanted to um... You know, I hopefully a lot of suppliers show up at these next two sessions because we can really show you step by step how to register for Ariba and how to find um, a lot of the information in Ariba that will help you understand who is at who are at those bidder briefings and that kind of thing. So hopefully we we see a lot of folks uh, participate next uh, couple of sessions. And thanks very much. This is a great session. Absolutely. Thank you, Beth. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. And Linda here. I uh, just want to say thank you to everyone for participating and thank you to all the presenters. I think that was a great way to kick off uh, what is hopefully going to be a lot of ongoing communication with the business community. Um, the other thing that uh, wasn't mentioned today and probably Kimberly will mention it when she does her training is if you go on our tenders website, if you have any new or innovative uh, or sustainable construction products uh, that you offer to market, you can register yourself in a database uh, that's available through our tenders website. So thank you all for everybody, or thank you everybody for uh, all of your uh, all of your work on this. Thank you, Linda. Th thank you very much, everyone, and uh, we look forward to seeing you next week. Thank Bye. you. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye now. Thanks. Thank you.